For those of you who have attended the kickoff luncheons in the past, you may remember my story. But for those of you who have not and don't know the story, let me begin. You are currently viewing parts of my life, a life filled with happiness, joy, and unfortunately, a sadness that is forever in my heart. The little guy in the pictures with me is my brother, Ray York. He is my only sibling. Only 15 months apart in age, we had so much fun growing up. Not only were we close in age, but close in general. Our parents gave us a great childhood, as you can see. We did not lack for anything. We took several trips to Disney World, drove across the country to visit family in Arizona and Texas, swam every day in the summer, went to the beach often, and the list goes on. We had a good life. He had a good life. Ray died in his sleep on March 17, 2001, and the cause of death was asthma. It was the worst thing I've ever experienced in my life. He lived here in Columbus, and I was the first one to learn of his death. I'll never forget that morning. It's the one day I would love to forget. But that day is so vivid, so scary, I can't forget it, no matter how hard I try. I stood there at his apartment, hoping that the cops who went in would come out quickly. With good news, that Ray was there. That his apartment was just empty. But instead, the two cops walked right up to me and took off their caps. With a ma'am, I'm sorry, your brother has passed. He's in his bed. From there, the scene was surreal. It was like a movie. Fire trucks came flying into the parking lot. Caution tape was put up. Because at the time, the cause of death was unknown, they had to treat it like a crime scene. There was even a guy with a camera around his neck ready to snap pictures. I watched him put on his white gloves, and then I decided I had to go. I couldn't bear to watch my brother, my only sibling, who, who three days earlier was so alive, so spunky, come out on a gurney covered up. That's when I decided to call my parents. To this day, I don't know which was worse, finding Ray or telling my parents that their only son had died. It was two weeks before the it was two weeks before we knew the cause of death. Never did it cross our minds that it could be asthma. After all, asthma doesn't kill. A few puffs on an inhaler, and it's fine, right? Wrong. How wrong we were not to know the severity of asthma, not to know the severity of Ray's asthma. Ray didn't even know. That's a problem. He thought it was normal to feel that way. He didn't know what it was supposed to feel like to breathe normal. It was two years later that I found out from a cousin that Ray woke up in the middle of the night about two weeks before he died. He was having a severe asthma attack. He couldn't breathe. And he went on. He went to an all-night store and bought an over-the-counter inhaler. If we would have known how to treat himself, if he would have known to go to the hospital, he may just be alive today. Just if. There are so many what-ifs, but Ray can't do anything about that now. We can. And that's why we're here today. It's all about education, and it's up to us to make sure what happened to Ray does not happen to other people. There is no reason for people to die of this completely controllable, completely manageable disease. So after getting through the initial shock of constantly being tormented with this disease, I began to think, if Ray had this nebulizer, it would have made my life and my parents' life a heck of a lot easier growing up. If Ray would have been on a preventative medication, he would have been alive today. There are so many more advances in medicine now than there were just six years ago, and it truly is unfortunate what happened to my brother. But that is why I'm here telling you my story. We have to stop this from happening. I have decided to help blow the whistle on asthma, and I'm hoping all of you will too. I ask for money every day of my life. That's my job. I sell advertising and have no problem asking for the sale. Today is no different, but today I'm not asking for advertising dollars. I'm asking for your help and I'm asking all of you to help blow the whistle on asthma. Whether it's a corporate donation, a personal donation, or just walking as part of a team, please join us on Saturday, October 4th. And if for nothing else, please help one more sibling like myself, one more mother, one more father, like my mother and father, avoid going through the awful tragedy I did six and a half years ago. It's preventable, and each of you can help raise the awareness. Let's blow the whistle on this disease. Let's blow the whistle on asthma together.